Strider Squadron, sortie ASAP. Arusia only has five IRBM silos in total. Therefore, the enemy's made a number of fake silos to try and throw our bombers off the scent. Did you say fake? They're painted to look at the real thing from the sky. Can't tell the difference. It's the wing of that LRSSG that brought down that arsenal bird. We've got the box. You do the terminal guidance. In order to use the targeting pods, you'll need to change weapons first. Try to align the missile silo with the circle in the center of your HUD. When you're lined up, hit the firing switch and the bomb will drop. You're gonna need to keep the silo aligned until the bomb hits. The enemy set up anti-air weapons in multiple locations. We need to work together to take them down. Keep the targeting pod trained on that silo until the payload is delivered. Ken, but it was off the mark. Let's give him another. The warhead should be exposed. Standard weaponry will suffice. You take your pick. Dropping another bunker buster will take some time. Aim carefully. Run one, we have the coordinates. Firing the bunker buster. Destruction of first missile silo confirmed. The IRBM is aimed at the Ocean Garrison. Soldiers' lives are at stake. We have no time. They completely lost it. You can bet on it. Let's end this madness. That's a swing and a miss. It'd be a lot easier to find the silo. That was nice. That was a mistake. No structure visible.
Once this mission's over, I guess we'll be back under the company commander's thumb again. Ah, what a pain in the ass. Trigger, the bomb has been dropped. Confirmed. IRBM is still intact. said about Wiseman, too. We have successfully prevented an enemy ballistic missile attack. Strider Squadron, you did very well without your unit commander. We are now preparing for the final stage of our long-range operation, seizing the capital.
With the loss of an arsenal bird, followed by the destruction of their ballistic missile base, Arusha is running out of ways to counter. This is a great opportunity for the Ocean Army to bolster our power to eventually take down the Erusian capital of Farbanti. The special long-range strategy is entering its final phase. Our objective is to attack and capture the Erusian Air Force Base in Cape Rainey in northern Erusian. This important base is at the forefront of our strategy to establish control of Farbanti. Under the cover of night, our plan is that all squadrons will invade from the valley to the south and mount an air assault on the area. The enemy's observation field has eyes on the skies above the valley, so your altitude will need to be restricted. If you go over a certain altitude, the enemy could spot you, ending the mission in failure. Keep that in mind. Once you arrive, you are to take out the enemy's air defense forces as soon as possible and prepare for the support squadrons. When the air defense forces are neutralized, the helicopter squadron should arrive carrying Marines. The plan is to take control of the base. Getting through the valley is only half the job. Strider Squadron, aircraft prep complete. You're cleared to taxi. Beginning nighttime aerial... Strider 1, you have passed through waypoint 1. No weapons until you reach the enemy base. All aircraft, reduce altitude. We have altitude restrictions from here on out. Keep altitude below 600 meters. Good. Maintain your current course. Searchlight up ahead. Watch for it. Stay out of their sight. Strider, pass this point. Our current ET matches yours. Catch them on guard. Get them secure the LZ quickly. We'll get you down safe. I'm worried you're short on men. Everyone here has already signed their wills. That ain't funny. Understood. Strider 1, you've passed through waypoint 2. The valley's about to get narrower. Be careful. Caution. Pull up. Caution. Pull up. Caution. Pull up. Caution. When can we take on the final mission? Caution. I'm starting to get tired of all this. This is the last step, Count. We'll take the enemy base Caution. and use it as a bridgehead. Watch yourselves out there. We're going to need all of you in Farbanti. Without Wiseman here, everybody wants to give orders like they're the company commander himself. And the best thing about Strider Squadron is our leader keeps his mouth shut. Watch your speed. You've passed waypoint three. You're coming up on the base, closing radio silence. We won't be able to talk again until you're over the base. Continue to keep an eye on your altitude. There are plenty of dark spots that can sneak up on you. I 
Watch your back. Call warning. That takes care of that. Nice work. We did it. That's the last of them. It's achieved air superiority. Target's destruction confirmed. That air support was right on the money. Pushing the enemy on their heel. Okay. Start running on the count of three. Great. I get to fly and send my booties in to ring the doorbell. There's still quite a few enemies hold up in there. However, we can't afford to wait any longer. Begin the assault. If anyone resists, kill them. Contact! Two o'clock! Go! Go! Fire! Clark, tear down that barricade! Excellent work on the night raid. Submarines have arrived from the Ocean mainland and are refueling. This base will serve as a frontline platform for our mission to take Farbanti. We're almost at the end of this operation. Mihai's second sortie was designed to calculate how his physiology changed under the stress of combat. My job was to compare his performance as a pilot now to when he was younger and understand how his skills evolved. To tell you the truth, I'm not sure I wanted to know the answers anymore. For a man his age, Mihai's body was unbelievably resilient, remarkably flexible. His reflexes were as sharp as they ever were. Still, after all those years of flying in the outer layers of the atmosphere, even someone as strong as Mihai wasn't immune to the effects of the strain. The human body is fragile. It was not meant to handle the excessive amounts of radiation that constantly bombarded the stratosphere. For Mihai's second sortie, we used a flight suit that was still untested. He seemed fine on takeoff, but by the time he landed back at the base, he was clearly a mess. He got caught in a surprise dogfight with an especially stubborn enemy. It took a while for Mihai to bring him down. The suit was ineffective. 
According to the data, it wouldn't let him fly to his full potential. A new flight suit was made to my exact specifications. When it finally arrived, Mihai's granddaughters glared at me with their disapproval. They blamed me for the pain their grandfather had to keep enduring. But Mihai remained stoic. He wasn't the type of man who cared about anything that happened here on the ground. I wasn't worried about it. I was confident the new suit would protect him thoroughly so that he could maneuver his plane any way he wanted. The moment he took off in his new flight suit, I realized what I had failed to before. Right after takeoff, as the wheels retracted, the plane suddenly arced up. It accelerated so quickly. I had never seen a plane move like that before. Mihai hit the high G's multiple times before disappearing into the blue. The support team couldn't even keep up. And then I knew. I understood why he never seemed to care about restoring his stolen country back to its former glory, and why he didn't seem to care about anything that happened here on the ground. Of course, Mihai's kingdom was the sky. The operation to capture Arusha's capital, Farbanti, is beginning. This is the culmination of our work. We need to capture the Arusian forces' general headquarters in the south of Farbanti and end this war. The plan is for ground troops to attack Farbanti from both the east and north, and a task fleet will attack from the southwest. We will secure air superiority over the capital while providing air support for our allies on the ground and in the water as required. By all accounts, we expect this to be an intense, full-scale battle across land, sea, and air. Should you need to replenish your ammunition or make necessary repairs to your craft, a return line has been set up in the north. During this operation, we will also be tasked with having to destroy the communication satellites that Neruja hacked. If we take down the information communication system that we believe they have control over, it should plunge Arusha into chaos. Once the capital falls, the Arusian military will be isolated and thrown into chaos, making it easier for us to end the war. However, that can't happen until after the capital falls, so you guys are the stars of this battle. Arusha will fight like a tiger, but we cannot lose. We must seize the capital and end this war. Strider Squadron, proceed to runway. Sortie ASAP. Our troops have engaged at Fravati Reconstruction Park, Silver Bridge, and the submerged area. We need you to help our boys in those three locations. This will end the war. 
It's time. Commence the operation. Our friends are waiting. Lately, as your company commander, I felt some of you young bucks coming after my championship belt. You're really putting the pressure on me. So I think I'm gonna go out there and run up the score. Just to one. show you guys how it's done. I trust I can count on all you to keep up. Let's get out there, take care of business, and come back in one piece. Strider 1, the turn line is to the north. Head that way if you need to refuel. Good luck, everyone. Count is back in the saddle of Cyclops 2. It's good to be flying with you again, Roger. Shit. Now that's your flight. It's launched. Mike, breaking the way. They're now moving to capture Farbanti Reconstruction Park. They're already engaged with the enemy. It seems the enemy was fast and protected. They could use some air support. Our air support has stopped the enemy. Advance on the hospital! Missile. 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 I'm not bandit. You've got a radar lock on you. Missile. 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 Missile 
ground. Missile inbound. Vessel confirmed sunk. We've lost 30% of our fleet. It's going to be difficult to complete our mission given these circumstances. Everyone's requesting backup. It'll take forever to get here. Strongest 
around here. I don't believe it. We've just lost ship three and four. We're taking heavy damage. It's like this monster is toying with us out there. We've got to do something. LRSSG, we have an emergency order from Mission Command. Bring down Mr. X. I know it's a tall order, but HQ wouldn't ask if they didn't have faith in you. There they are. It's the snowbirds. The two meters went at different levels. But don't underestimate the rest of them either. I should put them here. What do you mean? It's just like you say. The enemy has experienced fighters in their midst. Cyclops 1 is down. Cyclops 1 Why is down. He checked already, 
Reisman! I'm sorry, Count. This plane exploded. Reisman! Stay strong. We're not done here. Psychops 2, you've got the lead. Reisman! Shit! Negative, Psychops 2. You're the lead. I can't do it. Trigger should take command. The duty is yours. That's impossible. Do it. Ugh. Damn it! Psychops 4, form an element. We need our top gun if we're gonna take out that bastard. Count. These guys are way out of my league. I can't even get it close to them. Fox 3. Target was not struck. Success. We'll guide you to the scheduled airport. All aircraft, leave this airspace immediately. Negative. They've got a debt to pay. Count, we all feel the same way. Shit! So Wiseman died for nothing. This is a peacekeeping force forward base near Erusian territory. Other Allied aircraft have probably been forced to make emergency landings at other airfields. We don't know much. The mission to capture the capital is nearly complete, but we unfortunately have no intel. The enemy communication satellites are down, and we have confirmed the deaths of several Erusian leaders. But our enemy was smart. They had a similar plan. Our own communication systems were destroyed at approximately the same time. We have no idea when or if they'll come back online. Stand by for further details. As far as the chaos we find ourselves in these days, it's difficult to say which side pulled the trigger first. Arugia deployed an automatic intercept system with drones. Osea implemented long-range attacks to bypass them, so Arugia decided to sabotage Osea's communications and navigation technology. Arugia couldn't launch a satellite themselves, but they were still able to hack the software of the Osean transmission and navigation systems. Before Osea even noticed, half of their satellites were hijacked. That's when things got ugly. In an attempt to knock out each other's capabilities, both forces launched fighters loaded with anti-satellite missiles at the same time. Only military satellites were targeted. However, their destruction created a debris field in orbit which wiped out scores of other satellites, both private and government owned. What kept the world relatively sane up to that point had been free-flowing data and information. But now, those were gone. All that remained 
was chaos and confusion. Government and civilian broadcasts and transmissions were cut off. The flow of information had ceased. Forces on both sides of the conflict now found themselves unable to communicate with their superiors. Many of the smaller countries annexed by Arugia and yearning for their independence seized the opportunity and started their own uprisings. As for why some of Osea's military decided to break off from the main force and continue on their own, I have no idea. Perhaps there was some sort of dispute over the chain of command. The continent that had once seen wars that were only fought between Osea and Rugia was now full of numerous conflicts between rival leaders vying for power. Insurgencies were everywhere. I even heard a rumor that a group of Osean convicts had rebelled. Rumors. It never ceased to amaze me that even at a crazy time like this, something as trivial as a rumor could find its way here. Communications from corporate were cut off. Apparently, the entire computer network was down. It was a wise decision to make our drones autonomous with AI instead of being radio controlled. Wise and forward thinking. Even with their GPS offline, they can still use their sensors to navigate as long as they're working properly. I'm sure the drones are still working perfectly, following their mission orders to the letter. I wish I could upload Mihai's new data to them. But without a connection, I can't upload the software to the active drones. The new ones we're making, though, there should still be enough time to upgrade those before they're activated. I'll be taking the data I've acquired away from the front lines now. Oh, and I'll be taking the girls, too. I told my assistant, Masa, it was time to get Mihai's granddaughters ready to leave here. She's not much older than the girls, but she has a way about her, and I'm sure she won't have any trouble with them. I saw a plane flying off in the distance. I imagine it was looking for a safer place. The plane had a rose emblem on it. Perusia's communication networks have been down since their satellites were destroyed. Unfortunately, we are experiencing trouble too. All of Yuzia has been affected, and we don't know when things will be back up and running. We're not even sure if this is Yuzia's doing. Still, we will follow the strategy that was originally planned, and move on to the next operation after liberating Farbanti. Let's get to it! Since the war began, we've been receiving communications in secret from an officer in the Erusian army. With the capital under our control, Erusia's radical element is losing support quickly, affecting the balance of power. HQ is thinking of using the military officer as a way to gain leverage to settle peace negotiations. The officer is currently hiding in the outskirts of Anchorhead Bay, having joined up with support dispatch from the Osean army. The plan is that they'll take a standard vehicle to a rendezvous point at a harbor in the east part of the city, where a helicopter will be waiting. I would like the new Strider Squadron to provide escort for the officer. Cyclops will remain at the base on standby to serve as defense. With the communication network currently down in the capital, I very much doubt Arusia will be able to mount a regimented counterattack. However, it is likely that Arusia's intelligence department and the remaining forces who are aware of the officer's movements will interfere. Keep a close eye on the officer and make sure he stays safe. Our victory in Farbanti has given us a golden opportunity to finally end this war. Be safe out there. Take note that our satellite-based IFF has become unreliable following the recent communications failure. As such, target ID will be done by processing the images from the infrared cameras on your aircraft. Objects will initially appear as unknown on your HUDs, but will be ID'd once you close in on them for a set period of time.
Strider Squadron, you're cleared to taxi. To the unidentified Ocean craft, this is Captain Carl of the Ocean Army. Are you here for the escort? You're not the squadron I was expecting. Are you really friendlies? Over. This is Longcaster. Airborne warning and control system for the Ocean Long Range Strategic Strike Group. Captain Carl, they're on our side. And those two pilots we've heard about must be here too. Okay, I hope you're right. Longcaster, are all of these really unknowns? It's a state of civil war. The Erosian army is fighting itself. There's no guarantee the Oceans won't shoot us in this confusion. We'll image process the unknowns caught in your camps to identify friend or foe. The process will be faster if you get a close-up, well-centered image. Meanwhile, we just run if they shoot us, right? Affirmative. Always identify your target before you fire. Listen, those that protect General Labar are the real patriots. 
Blocking the road. Destroyed. No response to hails. Nice work. That takes care of that one. We're heading for the highway. Thanks to you, we got out of paying that toll. This is AWACS Argus. Those who can hear us are our allies. Your new orders are to dispose of Edouard Labarth. The Ocean Army officer with him is an imposter. We're almost at landfill number seven. If we can make it through, we'll be in arm's reach of the rendezvous at Ruder Park. Captain Cole, do you have the means to record this conversation? I wish to explain to you the situation inside Erusia. I'm sure the boys listening upstairs will record it. The open declaration of war, expanding the front lines, was all the work of some young Erusian officers. They were referred to as the radicals, but there was an unseen force guiding them. It was technology they borrowed from the Belkins. When they actually went to war, the performance of the attack drones exceeded their wildest dreams. And they were incredibly clean, which got public opinion and the opportunists within the military on their side. They even manipulated the princess. The Belkin technology advanced UAV research within the Erosian Flight Test Center by at least 10 years. They used the flight data from a former ace pilot to create drone AI, but... To us, it's no different than magic or alchemy. Airplanes are meant to be flown by human beings. Those of you listening in, am I wrong? We're heading towards Gruder Park. Rendezvous points is a helipad on this man-made island. We'll ditch the car and take the helicopter from there.
forces.
We have escort fighters, but we do not intend to engage in combat. Please stand down. What's going on? Try to get a little closer. Weapon use is prohibited. What's going on? Dr. Shudder! Whoa, whoa. There's a girl on board? He's not lying about carrying civilians. No. Unless she's a soldier.
has a beat on you. Enemy on your back. Strider 3, launching missile. Bandit has a lock. Target was not struck. Helicopters flying safely outside Anchorhead Bay. All aircraft, RTB, mission complete. All hostiles, huh? <laughs> General, the Ocean aircraft is here to pick us up. The approaching Ocean aircraft. Losing his army? The Elaborate. They stole our sealed orders. It should be a piece of cake. Are you set by the general staff? No, we might want to head to the I can't! To respond to the attack on the base, Cyclops has scrambled after being on standby. We'll head up too once our planes are ready. Oh, and Labarth is dead. What did you say? Apparently, he was shot down by another Ocean aircraft after he left the area of operations. I mean, I know it was chaos, but still. At any rate, the sealed order operation has come to a close. We have no idea about a plan for going forward. All we can do for now is watch our own backs. What's up with the commander? He's staying in his room. He's still alive, since we can hear him cry. The island we went to was supposed to have been secured by the ground forces. They hadn't gotten a handle on things by the time we got there. So now we were stuck in the middle of a half-assed campaign. My job was to get the planes ready for combat making repairs and handing them over to our troop of cons. Thing is, the enemy still had the hangars. The comms were still down, so none of us knew what the hell was going on. The last transmission I heard before everything went to shit 
was that some prisoners from an Ocean military penal unit rioted and managed to escape. They stole some jets and now they were flying around, taking out their former allies left and right. I wonder if any units like ours were out here, creeping around. Hearing the Ocean jets firing at each other overhead chipped away at morale. Since the radio was out, it was quiet. I liked it better that way. All I heard was the gunfire. Here we were, walking around carrying rifles. We were pilots, damn it. Friendly fire will probably kill us. You know things are desperate when the guards that used to lock us into solitary are now telling us it's better we all stick together. I guess they think our odds of surviving this war are better that way. After walking for miles across the battlefield, we came across the wreckage of a plane. Passenger, not military. I knew that rose. It was an Erujian liaison plane. The guard's dogs smelled something and took off. They led us to a cliff. And the bodies. Today, I lost everything. When Osea attacked our capital, my father, a man who was never really suited to being the king, was killed. I was to be flown out of the war zone to safety, but the plane was shot down by rebels. The entire crew was killed in the crash. Soldiers appeared and one shot at me. My dog went after him and I shot him to pieces. He was my best friend. After all those speeches I gave, about working together for peace. I thought everyone felt the same as I did. <gasps> I'm sure the soldier who shot at me knew I was the princess of Arugia. He was Arugian too. More soldiers have come. Now, there is no one left to protect me. I am so numb, I cannot move. Watch as one of their dogs approaches and sniffs mournfully at my dead friend. I wonder if it grieves for him as much as I do. I can barely think. I feel weaker by the minute. They don't know who these soldiers are with, but I managed to take a sip of the water they gave me. How long have you been here? Somehow, I muster the courage to answer the woman's question. I tell her I've been there three days. They gather around me with grim looks on their faces. What would they do if they knew I was the Erosion Princess? After searching the cockpit of the plane, the woman who spoke to me before came back to me. This is an air-to-ground tactical radio. It still works! I noticed she walked with a limp. She knelt down next to me and asked her companions to give me some food. And then, very softly, she said, You see, I used to listen to your broadcasts, your royal highness. <laughs> Just what did you see here? Okay, enough talk. Your opinions have all been taken into consideration. Beyond the seizure of Forbanti, which is important, and supporting the Erujian officer. At this point, I just don't know what our strategy is, or what our mission will be. Radio communication is still patchy for both the military and civilians, so we're getting zip from mission command about our orders. Still, with countless Erujian forces in the area, it's too dangerous for us to stay around here waiting for a miracle. Now, regarding Count's suggestion to think about self-defense, uh, I think we should make a break for Tyler Island. It was a large Ocean base before the start of the war. Count says his previous squadron took part in an operation to seize control of the island. 
It has the only base that will get us to the space elevator without refueling. It's also a transport facility for supply ships that provide drones and ammo for arsenal birds. For the Ocean forces that are looking to reclaim the space elevator, those are two great reasons in its favor. If everything went according to plan, the base may already be in allied hands when we get there. Though based on what Count told me about the island operation, it won't be easy to seize control. If the ground troops have managed to open the bridgehead, the transport route to Osea for supply ships should be available. With so much at stake, I can't imagine Arusia just giving it up without a fight. Things could really have gone bad. Even if there are enemies left, they should be pretty easy to suppress. I just want to go home, man. Me too. With that look on your face, Trigger, I know exactly what you want to do. If Trigger's ready to kick ass, then so am I. Damn straight. We're with you, Trigger. It's decided then. Let's get all the aircraft and haul ass to Tyler Island. Although we can avoid the Arsenal Bird's anti-air network, there's still remnants from the Erusion forces. I want to get to the island without getting into any unnecessary combat. Pick a fast craft and fix it how you want. Pack for a long trip, but remember, if you drag your ass, you'll get left behind. Strider Squadron, sortie ASAP. This is Tango 2-3, pursued by multiple tanks and APCs. Now all go down if we don't pull back the landing craft. And what? Abandoned Tango 2-3? Something's not right. Tango 2-3, we don't have the firepower to assist you. You're on your own. Please, we need help! Wagtail is on the Ocean landing ship. What's going on? What did you say? Multiple bogeys inbound. Damn it. Prepare for anti-air combat. This is the AWACS Longcaster. The aircrafts in your area belong to the LRSSG. Allied aircraft. A retreating vehicle is taking fire. Requesting assistance. Roger. Got a positive ID. Fox 2. Update us on Tyler Island. There are two Our forces are scattered and on the run. They're on the run? We were waiting for retreating units here to carry them out to the block. Our air support is here. Do me a favor, Longcaster. Many of our allies are cut off. We need support and an escape route. Understood. We'll do what we can. Let's help retreating Ocean forces. Take out any hostiles in their area. Don't engage till targets are ID'd. 
Missile. The boots on the ground don't need Missile. more people shooting at them. Missile. Hey, it's absolute chaos out there. The erosions are even starting to fight amongst themselves. Missile. Well, now we know what's going on, but Missile. shit. Missile.
need to ID the bogeys. Take them down if they're hostile. Understood. Identification complete. It's Erosion bombers and their escorts. Count's prophecy has come true. Take out all bombers, or they'll flatten our allies. Plenty of civilian casualties as well. Precision bombing is impossible in these conditions. Maybe they know they can't. We're gonna drop them all. We're outnumbered and we'll be surrounded. Missile. Target acquired. Missile. 
Good. Take a seat. Everyone's here. All right. Good work in sinking the supply ships. Not to mention saving the refugees. However, we're in no position to start celebrating. Even the commander here is starting to fray from the stress. Can't say I blame him. Now, Tyler Island is in a state of complete anarchy. This base isn't safe either. The faces you see around you are the only friends we've got. Take a good look. We found a boat, then sailed away from the island. We had to. We didn't belong there. The new guy's name was George. I noticed when the anarchist said his name, he said it with a thick Belkan accent. How did you know that he was from Belka? Well, both my parents were from Belka, so... You never told me that. They say that Belkans are known for their conspiracies. <laughs> That's just a stereotype. Now, I simply stated my honest opinion and was thrown in jail for it. The princess sat there looking miserable. That was a dumbass stunt she pulled back there, but it got us on this boat. Take a look at that. This ship is heading for a single rope that's hanging down from the sky. Do you know how far the end of that rope reaches? Outer space. No. It is a direct connection to the very potential of mankind itself. Or at least it was until war erupted. It's my strong belief that the rope might be connected to a very distant, faraway source of, of great conflict and strife. Even long before the war, the whole world started falling apart once Harling began trying to build it. I often wonder, what was going through Harling's mind when, when he was trying to destroy the very thing that so many people were sacrificed in order to create. Sacrificed? What do you mean? Have you seen all of those countless old space shuttles on Tyler Island that are no longer in use? Yeah. <laughs> I always thought of them as a good source of scrap. They're an obsolete technology that was abandoned during the construction of the space elevator. Which would mean that if the space elevator was destroyed, it would be that much harder for mankind to reach the stars, until we find another way. But even then, Harling still went ahead and tried to destroy it. At the cost of his own life. That's not the way I heard it. What I heard was that he sacrificed himself to protect the tower from an incoming missile. Oh. I was told he tried to fly his ship into the tower in order to destroy it. I wonder which story is true, your royal highness. I don't know. Looking at it objectively, it's reasonable to believe that Harling had both options before him. When it comes to which one you think he took, I guess it's like a mirror. Yes, it is. It's like a mirror looking into your own soul, based on whichever choice you believe it was. At the moment, though, I can only see darkness. I think... I think that thing should be destroyed. It's time for the briefing. Although, since we don't have any contact with HQ, it's not like this is an official mission. 
Anyway, it looks like the seizure of Tyler Island and the relief from Osea have been postponed. In the meantime, we just have to do what we can to survive. Since losing its capital city of Ferbanti, Eurusian forces have separated into smaller, autonomous factions. It looks like Eurusia's largest force and leading faction will pass through the area around this base. The space elevator is significant to them, so they're probably heading there. Should we intercept? Why? I doubt they're gonna start a fight now. Our top priority should be to get home. Let's go already. Yeah. It's not like we have the supplies, power, or even a real reason to put up a fight. But, what are we going to do if they bring the fight to us? We need to be ready to push them back. If we head inland from here towards Arusha, there's an old castle that's been converted into a stockpiling base. Shalaji Castle. It's currently occupied by some of the Erusian forces that broke off, but we need ammo and fuel. They appear to have converted a freeway into a runway, so we can expect them to have the capacity for air combat. But they'll be easier to handle than Arusha's lead faction. Well, we can't use all our aircraft to attack. The transport carrying the stolen supplies needs support. Okay, Strider Squadron. You head out first, and neuter the dogs at the stockpiling base. Rendezvous with Cyclops Squadron, who will bring the transport. Then we bring the supplies back to this base. Got it. Aircraft are our only threat. Sounds good. We'll make it. We're all gonna fly home. Together. Strider Squadron, aircraft prep complete. You're cleared to taxi. No Ocean forces are in the region ahead. No allies here. No need to ID your target. We've set a number of priority targets, focusing on their anti-aircraft weaponry. Okay, team. Need to work. Locked on. Capture this base and take the fuel and supplies. That's the plan, right, Trigger? 
You take if you want to live. That's how it was where I grew up. I was just double-checking mission orders, Hushin. Are in the air. Missile. All right. Missile. 
Squadron, airborne. We shoot the invaders out of our skies. Good luck, Soul Squadron. Understood. You are in violation of Shalaji airspace. Mm -hmm. Turn around and we'll be forced to shoot you down. Mm -hmm. This is the OC and Long Range mm -hmm. Strategic Strike Group. Mm -hmm. Land immediately and hand over your planes mm -hmm. and base to us. Mm -hmm. ah, you must be the Snowbirds. It's oh, absurd wow. for you to talk in some tongue that goes in one of the leaders at Morbanti. You bastard! You defile this country. As long as you're here, this country will never know peace. Shit! Missile away! Missile. Enemy on your back! Missile. Missile. They think they're a band of knights. I hate them even more. They think they're actual nobility. I'm a wild gunman, man. Time to shut your mouth. Strider 2, Bucks 2.
The resupply went well. We should be okay on food and fuel reserves for a little while at least. Luckily, the rumor that the Erujian army is advancing nearby is only a rumor. There's no sign of them from the skies. Rumors, rumors, rumors. This is what happens when you lose communications. But we got one good fact. The plane trigger shot down was an advanced model of the XO-2 Wyvern. It was developed in the last Continental War. Erugia had a lot up their sleeves. Apparently, they were even supposed to have Belkin aircraft back in the first war. What if Trigger couldn't shoot it down? Just thinking about it gives me chills. We're lucky to be here. In war, you never know what's lurking behind the curtains. But it looks like everything's loose now. Solid chain of command, rest periods after sorties, a battlefield where you know friend from foe. All of that's gone now, lost in a fog of confusion. It feels like a distant dream. Now, just how the hell are we gonna get out of this mess? When we got to the mainland, we found the space elevator's support facility. I guess this was the factory where they built the gigantic structure the elevator traveled in. There was this little girl sitting in front of a mural. When the princess saw her, she shuddered like she'd seen a ghost. The girl had a stuffed animal. This was the day after the shit went down at Tyler Island.
She walked right up to the princess, took her hand, and led her into the factory. One thing's for sure, they knew each other. The factory had been converted to a production line for Erujian drones. It was fully automated and chugging along, making drone after drone after drone. Once they got inside, the princess stopped and just stood there. Another girl was there with a man in a lab coat. He was trying to use his keyboard, but she wouldn't let him. She took a data chip and threw it on the ground. Then she walked over to us and took the gun from the prison guard's holster. She pulled the trigger and destroyed the chip. Later, I found out that the girl with the gun and the one with the stuffed animal were sisters. They were also the granddaughters of Mihai A. Shalaji, the legendary pilot. Gramps used to talk about him. He said Mihai was the top ace from two wars ago. Know any Belkins? Because this guy was a Belkin, and they love to stir shit up. Pitting nations against other nations is a particular favorite of theirs along with developing hyper-advanced technology. That's right. I'm Belkin, born and raised. My country is gone now. Rather than surrender to its enemy, Belka detonated seven nuclear weapons on its own soil. My people scattered around the globe, living in the shadows of other countries. We had a new purpose, to breed wars. The theory was that through war, we could achieve our destiny and our revenge. I had just finished inputting Mihai's data when his granddaughter came in. She destroyed the only copy I had of the information I squeezed out of him. The girl loved Mihai. No one knew more than her just how hard I pushed her grandfather for that data, how much I made him sacrifice in the process. I promised his granddaughters that his efforts were not in vain, that it could end this terrible war. But in the end, it only caused more chaos and despair. We were responsible for all this damage, all this tragedy. Now, we were going to pay for it. The Erujians, once our allies, would see to that. I had lost the drive to continue my work even before I noticed Mihai's granddaughters eyeing me with suspicion that one day. I should have stopped then, for all our sakes. Mihai's granddaughter tossed the gun aside. She said if she resorted to killing, she'd just end up like the rest of us. And by us, she meant everyone, including the princess. Like me. The princess was afraid to look into the girl's eyes. She knew that by encouraging her people, she kept the war going. Mihai and his granddaughter were victims of it, and now they too were paying the price. Is this for Belka or for Arugia? My grandfather had only one wish, to continue soaring through the endless skies. That was the only place where he felt alive. But I don't even have a country to call home, let alone the sky. The Black Forest, the lake, they are no longer mine. Even though those lands were once cherished by my late mother. We have to learn to put that sense of nostalgia behind us and behave like mature adults. My homeland. She's right. It feels so far away now. The woman with the rifle approached me. She was focused on more pressing issues. I checked the computer. All of the data on the legendary ace had already been installed. No, I pulled it before it was completed. However, there are two aircraft that are already scheduled to be manufactured based on that data. We must destroy the factory. 
This isn't the only one. There are more facilities just like it. And the two planes containing the data will be manufactured at one of those facilities. So, this place runs on solar power that the space elevator generates, right? How about the others? We can destroy the space elevator and cut the power to them. First things first, let's take this one out. I'll show you which locations to target. I stood there, thinking about that mural by the factory's entrance. Harling commissioned it to be painted. I realized that in the background, behind the dancing figures, the artist had painted several space elevators. I understand now. The space elevator wasn't designed to exploit Erugia after all. Good. And afterwards, we'll bring down the space elevator itself. No matter why it was built, right now, it's the root of this chaos. I wonder... Yes? I wonder... which path you would choose... when looking at Harling's mirror. Let's get the briefing started. We've done enough air operations. Just let us go home. There's no path for us to get home. Whatever direction you fly, it'll be right into a hail of enemy fire. Earlier, we received a communication via the partially restored general network. Here is what it contained. Apparently, the erosion radicals have gathered around the space element, as it's a source of energy. Give the war mongers a powerful energy source, and you give them the luxury to keep on fighting. In response to this, people from both Osea and Erujia have joined forces and will take down the final arsenal bird in a saturation attack from the air to the sea. Once that's achieved, they'll take the space elevator from the aggressors. Has the source been verified? It could be fake. I hear you. Take a look at what's written at the end. Hey, dumbass, if you want to bring the world back from the brink, go to the lighthouse and see the future. Dumbass? Sounds familiar. It certainly does. It's from those guys we met in Tyler Island, the 444 squad. It's a message to all those looking to end the war. But I also think it's a message for Trigger. Guess we'll do what it says. Okay. Well then, I'm thinking we go roast that damn bird. Looks like we're all on the same page. It's time to end this war. Time to fly, guys. Let's go get that arsenal. Squadron, sortie ASAP. Looks like our luck has turned. LRS.
SSG, you will secure air superiority. There are Russian aircraft in the coalition, so they have been ID'd as friendly via the data link. Just confirmed it. The Russian government aircraft, including drones, will show up as hostiles. You two aces, I'm thinking it's time to show us what you've got. We don't have two anymore. Guess nobody told them. That's quite true, Count. It's not just two. Wiseman trained his squad well. Everyone still in it is an ace. He'd be proud of you all. To all of you who have gathered here, regardless of your country, this is headquarters of the Ocean Army Southern Command. Wait, you can forget that designation. We are a coalition formed exclusively for the sole purpose of taking down the Arsenal Bird. Wait until we're ready to strike the Arsenal Bird in unison. Roger. Ross, don't be speaking on an open channel. The enemy can hear everything he's saying. There's no other choice. The Illusion aircraft are in the coalition as well. This is Gold Squadron and Rigel Squadron of the Illusion Air Force. We're here on our own. Broadcaster, we're entering your airspace. Looking at a mural. There's another one here. 
10 seconds to impact. Five, four, three, two, one. Impact. How many got caught in that explosion? Longcaster, do we have more incoming? Unknown. Proceed with caution. Wilco. arriving in 10 seconds. Five seconds to arrival. Two. Inbound. Saturation attack. Wait for the signal. Inform the coalition units. We're nearing zero hour. Ten seconds until the united attack of the arsenal bird. Incoming! Five, four, Everybody, three, give this two, attack everything you've one. got. Open fire! Go through the airlock 
and get on the maintenance elevator. Head to the top of the windbreak. Do you think you can put on that pressurized suit by yourself? You'll never get it on over those frills. Right or one, that's what I like. Yes. I think you're sick of that arrogant bastard. Seriously. No good. The engine control room is gone. Get water to the officer. Get a radar room and air and see, I think. Nothing phases this thing. Where are we supposed to hit it? Main propeller one confirmed stall. Good work, Trigger. Keep up the attack. All aircraft. We can no longer commence with a second saturation attack. All aircraft. Separately engage in direct attacks. HQ, it won't be easy to take down the Oslo Bird with conventional weaponry. All the ace pilots in the world won't save us unless we have a plan. Give us time. We'll see what we can do. You're just thinking about it now? Cover any friendlies, it's hit. Strider 1, Fox 3. Both major Ellis have been stalled. It's readying its APS. Is everything okay? The 
Longcaster, can you estimate the point of impact? Don't worry, looks like it'll be open water. All aircraft, avoid the target's path. That's the last of the ropes. Even in death, that thing is intimidating. Nice work. You pulled off a perfect landing. Well, we're okay for the moment. Now the real challenge begins. Well, if it isn't the... I can't just snap my fingers and make a plane. Believe me, I wish I could. Right now, we needed one. Bad. When we were coming over on the boat, I remember seeing an aircraft carrier. That gave me an idea. The Admiral Anderson. The name of an old sailor. When the first drone started attacking, the ship wasn't ready for battle yet. It was still in the dock, getting all rigged up. So they rushed to get her ready. I know about Anderson. In the previous Ocean War, he was the commander of a ship that sent out the last fleet of jets. They say the deck was sloping so bad as it sank, the last plane barely made it off. Those fighters ended the war. That story gives me a little bit of hope, especially at a time like this. We're all in the same boat, like it or not. If this war keeps going on like it is, It'll be the end of everything. The military loaded this thing to the rafters with planes. Some were fighters that were going to be delivered to bases in occupied territory. It was hit before it could complete the mission. Jackpot. The hangars were loaded with goodies. This scrap queen's got work to do. Trigger, everyone, listen up. The operation was a success. Erusian defense forces have been neutralized and all arsenal birds are down. However, those two new drones buzzing around have royally screwed up our plans. The Ocean and Erusian Coalition's air forces are in a sorry state thanks to them. We might not even have any viable aircraft. 
According to the Scrap Queen, the drones are trying to use the space elevator's transmission capabilities to send their data to drone manufacturing plants across the continent. They're trying to strengthen their numbers. What's worse, their data contains a depth of war experience. So the newer aircraft will be more tactically advanced. If that's the case, this war will never end. We need to take both drones down no matter what it takes. We'll do it so we have homes to go back to. Well, the Scrap Queen's on our side. She says she can make any aircraft fly. This is our final mission. Trigger, let's go. We've got a goddamn war to end. Squadron, take off prep complete. Roger that. 
Understood. All right. Understood. Missile. So these elevators are able to broadcast and communicate. With the information Missile. infrastructure down, it's the only place capable of wide area data transmission. The drones are waiting for it to power up again. Clever little bastards. Go leader to Longcaster. UAV is confirmed in direction of travel. All aircraft converge on Skull Squadron. Surround and shoot them down. Strider 3, copy. Let's do it, Ocean. Welcome. UAV reacting. Damn, they're fast. All aircraft stay sharp. Intercept now. Trigger's reactions. Oh. It's observing Strider 1. 
out of here. The space elevator. The windbreak is hollow, and there's no ceiling all the way up. Not sure if my bird can handle it, though. Fly! I know you can make it! I'll attempt a belly landing! Get out of here! Everyone's waiting Go for away. you! Go away. Go away. to wait until I have less fuel, but I have no choice. Attempting to land. I don't think my plane will make it. Anyway, here goes. Come on, baby, stay with me just a bit more. Can you hear me? Look, it's Trigger. Strider 1 has returned to radar. Oh, I did it! That's our trigger! He's a damn hero! <laughs> no doubt. You're better than me. Where's Strider 2? Damn it. Does anyone have eyes on count? Wish y'all could have seen that. <laughs> you damn fool. What's your position? Watching Trigger climb. I guess it's my fate to watch from down below. Yeah. Well, we're all in the same boat there. Yeah, well, I guess we are. We're sending help. Give us your coordinates. Directly under the space elevator. Elevation is minus 500 meters. Minus? Hey, Trigger. You dumbass. Tell me something. What color is the sky up there? you how proud I am to be the first to land Wait, this what was that transmission? This is Captain K. Nagase of the spaceship Pilgrim One. The ocean of stars in our galaxy is finally within our reach. To the pilot who generously gave this spaceship a place to dock, we are forever grateful. The universe lies ahead of us, waiting to be discovered. And now, at last, we have a gateway to ascend to it, over and over again. It's all coming together for me. Today was the day, the moment of her return. I salute the pilot who gave us all a future. Skies unknown. The path to mankind's vast future remains standing, Grandad. The refugees built the settlement for themselves at the base of the space elevator. A humanitarian mission from Yuktuvania airdropped some supplies for them again today. Thanks to the princess, the whole world was pitching in to help these people. Handing out the relief supplies would have been a perfect gig for that anarchist dude. But since he's dead now, the job went to the guy from Belka, George. I guess Tabloid got that new system he wanted in the end. Mihai's granddaughters are helping out too. Mihai. That cranky old geezer's here with us, too. I never wanted to create anything, and now here I am, clinging to life. Watching as my grandchildren and their generation make a new future for themselves and the world. Is this my punishment, then? All I do is lie here, wasting away. I'll never know the freedom of flying the open skies ever again. I've been grounded, and my wings have been clipped. You know what having peace in the world means? It's being able to die in your own bed at a ripe old age. Peace is what those girls are working so hard for here. We got a bunch more refugees today. And the princess? She's looking to the stars. 
dark blue to the heavens and beyond. Can you hear me? Trigger, everyone, listen up.